Hello students. In this lecture, we will continue the discussion on design of spar gear. In the previous lectures, we discussed about the force analysis at the time of power transmission through uh, gears, and we found the uh, forces acting on the gear. These are there are two components of the resultant force: one tangential and another one radial force. Okay, so we can calculate the value of tangential force with respect to the rated torque, and which will found with respect to the power required to transmit okay now next we discussed about the gear tooth failure so there are mainly two types of failure uh, one the uh, gear uh, can fail with, uh, with due, due to the lack of strength okay so we can design the gear with on the basis of the strength and another one the failure can take place by means of the surface failure okay now till now we discuss about the design procedure uh, with respect to the strength okay now uh, also we discussed about the beam strength so actually the force uh, beam strength analysis uh, this is with respect to the analysis of sir wilfred lewis and there we uh, assume that only the uh, effect of the tangential component of force and also we assume some other things and we develop the equation uh, pt or sb this is equals to mb sigma b into y so sb here this is the beam strength it's nothing but the maximum value of maximum acceptable value of the tangential component of force and when we say that the maximum value that means sigma b in this equation this is the this is the maximum value of the bending stress before failure okay now we know that here the bending stress uh, the uh, this is uh, not static in nature that means the force acting the tangential force this is not uh, with respect to time constant so this is fluctuating in nature so that's why the bending stress maximum value this is the endurance limit strength of the material okay endurance limit strength and endurance limit strength or endurance endurance limit stress it depends on various factors like the surface finish stress concentration and also all these factors is very difficult to consider for finding the bend, the, the endurance limit stress so that's why according to the buckingham uh, equation okay we take some approximate value of bending stress and this value this is bending stress this is equals to endurance limit stress stress is equals to one third of sut okay sut means the ultimate point tensile strength okay so this consideration is due to the it's it's the it's due to uh, there are different factors responsible for the endurance limit stress okay the limit of the endurance limit stress and it is very difficult to consider all these factors so we take this approximate equation for finding the value of bending stress okay also we discussed about the effective load on gear tooth so here in the beam strength the equation this is sb equals to mb sigma b into y here sb this is the maximum value of the tangential force and this is the rated value okay we we, we find this tangential force pt with respect to the rated torque but effective load uh, this is due to the at the time of operation uh, this uh, the the force actually act on this Uh, gear teeth this is not the rated force there are uh, different reasons due to which the force magnitude can vary okay like that so that's why this term effective load on gear tooth comes in this scenario okay now it's required to find the effective load uh, and uh, that means the the magnitude of the force vary so And the next thing this is how can we calculate the effective load that means the actual force acting on the gear teeth so there are different reasons for this variation so first you can say that the reason is how uh, we calculate the force with respect to the rated torque but torque at the time of uh, tran power transmission is not constant throughout the operation it can vary so uh, it's required to find the maximum torque with res uh, maximum force with respect to the maximum torque so torque variation can take place in the driving side and also on the driven side okay so for finding the maximum one we use some factor this is called the surface factor cs which is equals to the ratio of maximum torque and the rated torque and you can say that ultimately this is the ratio of maximum force so pt max pt max by pt that means this is the rated torque 
okay so from this uh, equation we can uh, or you can say that from this factor you can calculate the maximum value of the tangential force okay and these some standard chart is available uh, for the uh, power that means the speed reduction gearbox with respect to the different condition of the driving side machines and the driven side machine okay so you can find this at uh, the data according to your requirement uh, for the machine and you can calculate the maximum value of tangential force okay so this is one reasons for the variation of the force the tangential force which is not equals to the rated to, uh, rated force okay now another one you can say that the force pt uh, you calculate with respect to this equation you can say that uh, this is this force is that means it's true when the, uh, the the speed of both the gears is very less or you can say that nearly zero okay but when uh, the speed of the, the gears it has moderate speed or high speed at that time it's uh, the force it's not static in nature so there will be some impact force act in between the uh, in between the gears and there are different reasons for this impact so you can say that the reasons are like inaccuracies of the tooth profile errors in tooth spacing misalignment between the bearings elasticity of the parts inertia of the rotating disc so these are the reasons due to which the impact force act in between the missing teeth so it is it is not static so you calculate the value of the tangential force with this equation you can say that this is the it has static uh, nature which is not the practical situation okay so that's why it's required to find which is the actual one for for, for the design okay so for finding the uh, actual actual force uh, we, we uh, it's required uh, that actually we use this consideration this is the effective load on gear tooth okay so pt term is true when the speed of the gears is very less but when it it has moderate speed so this uh, the, the nature of the force this is uh, dynamic okay so for finding the dynamic force at the initial stage it is very difficult to calculate it so that's why two methods are available one this is first one this is called the approximate estimation approximate estimation method and uh, we calculate the effective force by this method by considering the velocity factor okay by considering the velocity factor and the equation we use for finding the effective load this is equals to maximum force this is equals to cs into pt by cv okay we know so here the cv this is uh, we use some empirical relations developed by sir barth okay and these empirical uh, relations actually uh, useful for finding the uh, module of the gear or you can say that the final dimension of the gear but all these dimensions are not the true dimensions you can say that the nearly true dimension because these are the empirical uh, relations but you can use it because for first many years it gives satisfactory results and also these empirical relations uh, uh, these relations are sanctioned by the american gear manufacturing association okay so you can use these empirical relations and these relations the uh, cv that means the velocity factor okay this depends on mainly two factors one this is the uh, the manufacturing methods we use for uh, making the gear and also the pitch line velocity now here the pitch line velocity at that stage it is very difficult it is difficult it is impossible to find it because uh, pitch line velocity equation we know that this is c the, the pitch line velocity velo this is equals to uh, this is equals to pi d dashed n by 60 into 10 to the power 3 this is the equation for pitch line velocity now here d that d dash this is the pitch circle diameter but uh, this value is unknown to us at up to that stage so that's why for finding the pitch line velocity it is required to assume some value okay it is required to assume some value of pitch, pitch, of the uh, pitch line velocity okay so the empirical relations depends on these two factors the manufacturing method and the pitch line velocity and the equations are like that cv this is equals to 3 by 3 plus v and this equation is acceptable uh, for the conditions like the uh, which if you make the gear by ordinary and commercially cut gears and also the pitch line velocity you know that this is less than 10 meter per second okay also the equations are like that 6 by 6 plus v 
Here, the manufacturing method of the gear, this is accurately hobbed and generated gears and the pitch line velocity, this is less than 20 meter per second. And also some equation is available, some empirical relation, this is 5.6 by 5.6 plus root over of V. Okay, here the manufacturing method, this is uh, precision gears with saving, grinding and lapping and the pitch line velocity, this is greater than 20 meter per second. So all these are empirical relations. Okay, but you can use it because uh, for many for long times it gives satisfactory result. Okay, so this is the procedure by the approximate uh, method for finding the effective force. Okay, so from the beginning you can compare. So here the PT, PT this is the tangential component of force and we calculate it with respect to the rated torque. Okay, so this PT is responsible for development of the bending stress on the gear teeth which we discussed by the analysis of the Lewis equation. Okay, and this bending stress is responsible for failure for the gear teeth when we uh, continue the design procedure with respect to the strength. Okay, when we design it on the basis of the strength. Okay, so the bending, the, so the equation, this is SB equals to MB sigma B into Y. Here sigma B, this is not static, it's fluctuating. So that's why the endurance limit strength, this is the criteria for design. And uh, we use some approximate equation. This is one third ultimate tensile strength of the material. Okay, and uh, next uh, here the S, SB, this is the tangential maximum value of the tangential force. Okay, now the condition for the safe design, this SB, the beam strength will be greater than equals to P effective. Okay, SB greater than equals to P effective. This is the criteria of the condition for the design because SB, this is the maximum value of the tangential force. Now here the tangential force, this is the rated force, not the actual one. Now the actual force, this is the effective force. Okay, this is the e effective force and there are different various reasons are there for variation of this actual force with respect to the rated force. Okay, now here, now so uh, next we discuss about the, what are the reasons uh, due to uh, for these variations. So first one, you can say that the torque, this is not uh, uniform this can vary and uh, we calculate the tangential force with respect to the torque. So due to this variation, the maximum torque we calculate with respect to the surface factor. So uh, up to that discussion, we can calculate the module, the approximate value of the module. So the first one, the condition, this is bending, uh, bending stress. This is, uh, that means the, sorry, the bending, so the beam strength, it's greater than equals to P effective. So we can write this equation SB is equals to P effective multiplied by factor of safety. This is the max, this is the rated value of the, uh, of the tangential force. This is the actual value or dynamic force multiplied by the factor of safety. Okay, we can, we can say that. Now next, PT, we know that PT, this is equals to twice MT by D dash. Now MT equals to 16 to 10 to the power 6 kilowatt by twice pi N. So you can write down PT this is equals to twice mt by d dashed is equals to twice mt by mz okay twice mt by mz because you know that uh, here d dashed module you know that the module this is equals to module is equals to diameter by the number of teeth Okay, so you can write down D dust is equals to D dust is equals to M into Z. Okay, so this is the equation for uh, the tangential force or you can again write down if you put the value of MT there. So 2 by MZ into 60 into 10 to the power 6 kilowatt by twice pi N. Okay, so this is the equation for PT. <coughs> okay. Now again here P effective effective force this is equals to CS by CV into PT. CS by CV into PT. Okay. So this equation. Now here you can write down this is CS by CV 
into pt equals to that one this is 2 by mz into 60 into 10 to the power 6 kilowatt by twice pi n okay this is the p effective or you can rewrite this equation this is equals to 60 into 10 to the power 6 by pi into kilowatt this is the power into cs by m into z into n into cv okay so this is the equation for p effective and also here beam strength sb this is equals to m into b into sigma b into y this is the equation for beam strength or you can rewrite this equation this is equals to m square into b by m here b by m this is the ratio of face width and module into sut by 3 you know that the bending stress according to this consideration uh, this is equals to one third sut okay so this is bending stress into y okay so you can say that this is equation number one okay now they are equation number two and they are equation number three okay so in this with this three equation you can develop the equation for the module okay so you can develop the equation for the module here here the sb sb is equals to so the equation sb equals to sb is equals to sorry sb is equals to p effective into factor of safety okay so the sb is equals to m square from equation number 3 m square b by m sut by 3 into y is equals to p effective this is equals to 60 into 10 to the power 6 by pi into kilowatt into cs by m z n cv into factor of safety okay so this is the equation now from this equation you can develop the equation for the module so the module is equals to module is equals to ultimately this is 60 into 10 to the power 6 by pi pi this is multiplied by kilowatt cs factor of safety by this is z n cv b by m into s u t by 3 into y whole to the power whole to the power 1 by 3 ok so this is the equation with respect to the approximate uh, with respect to the you can say that the uh, beam strength or the approximate uh, method for finding the effective load ok this is the equation so from up to that uh, discussion you can uh, you can develop the you can find the dimensions or the module for the gear teeth ok